Good afternoon, members. Uh, it is now 2.30 p.m. We have also formed a quorum. I declare the meeting of the House Committee open. Item 1. Confirmation of Minutes of Meeting. Minutes of the second meeting held on the 19th of October 2018. The draft minutes have been circulated to members prior to the meeting. So far, we haven't received any comments from members. I would like to invite members to confirm the minutes. Minutes confirmed. Matters arising. Report by the chairman on her meeting with the chief secretary for administration. I do not have anything special to report to you. Item 3. Business arising from previous council meetings. A. Legal Service Division report on subsidiary legislation gazetted on the 19th of October 2018 and tabled in council on the 24th of October 2018. I would like to invite the legal advisor to give us a brief introduction in relation to paper LS5-18-19. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Our report covers 25 items of subsidiary legislation. Well, um, in front of you, you have got a, a list of all the 25 items. First of all, I would like to talk about LN173. This is to amend um, air pollution control non-road mobile machinery emission uh, regulation. This is to impose more stringent emission standards on non-road vehicles. For the new emission standards, you'll find it in Part 4, 3 to 5 of um, Part 1. LN 173 also provides for provisional um, transitional provisions so that it will not apply to non-road vehicles in respect of which applications for approval have been made before the commencement to the EPD. The LSD is currently studying the relevant legal notice, uh, if necessary, will provide a further report. In relation to the first item of subsidiary legislation, any member wishing to set up a subcommittee to follow it up? Mr. Stephen Hall, you request? No? All right. Next group, legal advisor. For the second group, 17 items of subsidiary legislation relating to the implementation of Maritime Labour Convention concerning the working and living conditions of seafarers. So, a number of uh, subsidiary legislation items. Uh, 15 of them are about commencement notices. For LN176, the commencement notice is to say that um, this is about the commencement date uh, of the um, Merchant Shipping Seafarers Amendment Ordinance 2013. We have also got other commencement notices. In fact, in the year 2013, the Legislative Council set up a bills committee to look at Merchant Shipping Seafarers Amendment Bill. In 2016, a subcommittee was set up to look at the relevant subsidiary legislation. Uh, to follow up on the advice of the subsidiary legislation, um, by LN174, uh, the Merchant Shipping Seafarers Working and Living Conditions Regulation will be amended so as to introduce a new provision to say that for agents recruiting uh, seafarers must make sure that before the agreement is reached, uh, the seafarer will have the chance to fit and study the um, contract or the agreement. And then we have got consequential amendments to the official log books. For 175 and 176, uh, they will come. They have come into effect on the day on which it was uh, they were published. That is 19th of October 2018. Uh, for items 2 to 18, any need to set up a subcommittee? Um, James Ho, uh, James Toe, and then Mr. Stephen Ho would like to join. Please circulate a paper. And then um, we have two other items, namely LN193, LN194, and they're related to the uh, identity card replacement exercise. For LN193, it says that uh, within periods specified, uh, certain um, 
ID card holders must have their ID cards replaced. And for AWN 193, he says that for those born in the year 1985 or 1986, as well as 1968 and 69, they have to be the first group to be involved in the ID card replacement. Uh, disciplined service um, officers as well as uh, lawmakers would also be included in the first group. And then... As a result of LN193, uh, we need to have LN194 to repeal certain uh, regulations. And they come into operation on 27th of December 2018. And you need to set up a subcommittee, uh, James Toe. Anybody wishing to join, please circulate a paper. Thank you. Next, LN191. This is to amend the Pharmacy and Poisons Ordinance in relation to the relevant schedules so as to add 10 items. And the legal effect is that when it comes to the uh, sales, supply, storage and labelling of such substances, they will be subject to certain controls. Um, well, stroke and uh, leprosy as, epilepsy as well as another disease will be involved. And in fact, they have come into operation on 19th of October 2018. Um, and you need to set up a subcommittee? No? All right, thank you. Next, uh, LN192, destination of two places as public libraries. And in fact, uh, the current destination of one existing library will also be repealed. The effect is that um, the two places will be under the jurisdiction of the Director of Leisure and Cultural Services. And they come into operation on 15th of December 2018. For this item, any need to set up a subcommittee? No. All right, thank you. Please continue. Uh, LN 195, Financial Institutions uh, Resolution Loss Absorbing Capacity Requirements Banking Sector Rules. The Monetary Authority, um, the Insurance Authority, as well as the Securities and Futures Commission um, making provisions concerning the loss absorbing capacity so as to make sure that banks will be adequately uh, prepared to absorb the loss. And when the financial institutions are no longer uh, solvent, um, there will be ways to help them to maintain their capital requirements. Uh, regarding the proposed um, changes, you find them in paragraph 40 of our paper. One of them says that uh, the relevant FI um, may issue certain instruments, that is the LAC debt instruments, so that those cannot continue, uh, can deal with their, uh, can dispose of uh, their losses. As far as the taxation treatment is concerned, well, in fact, the administration will present a bill um, next Wednesday. There will be the first reading of IR. Amendment number 6, uh, Bill 2018. So on the 2nd of November, we're going to report further to you. So for LN195, and you need to set up a uh, subcommittee, James Toh, uh, Hu John, Mr. Jin Chen, uh, Chen. Please continue. This is to amend the Securities and Futures Financial Resources uh, Rules 2018. This is to clarify for the purposes of calculating the liquid capital and required liquid capital uh, to account for its assets, liabilities, and transactions. Uh, well, it is quite a lengthy uh, piece of uh, subsidiary legislation. We're still studying the matter. We need to report to you further. So regarding um, the 24th item, uh, subcommittee to be set up, James Toe. Uh, who else would like to join? Well, I have one more point to seek your advice or the legal office legal advices uh, comment. I think, personally speaking, probably this piece of um, subsidiary legislation uh, will draw uh, more or less the same group of colleagues. Um, as in the case of the previous set of subsidiary legislation. Can we have a subcommittee looking at both sets of subsidiary legislation? Logically speaking, I think it will do. Uh, I'm open. Well, according to our practice, uh, well, if the nature is the same, uh, we'll have, it, uh, have them studied by the same subcommittee. Legal advisor. Well, 
I think it's up to members to make a decision. But then for area 195, uh, it was made by the monetary authority. For area 196, it was made by the uh, Securities and Futures Commission. In other words, by different authorities. Mr. Chen. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, for area 195, um, well, the cassette, uh, the cassette version is really uh, of a huge uh, volume. I don't think it is appropriate to combine the scrutiny with that of another subsidiary legislation. Otherwise, it would take a lot of time. Well, I think we better have them dealt with by two different subcommittees. James Tung? Uh, I don't have strong views. Would you like to set up a subcommittee on LN 196? Um, yes. Um, who would like to join? This is about the Securities, Futures, Financial Resources Amendment Rules 2018. Kenneth Learn will join. Uh, all right. Please circulate a paper. Please continue. LN 197. Statue Law, Miscellaneous Provisions, Ordinance 2018, Commencement Notice. This is to upon um, the date of operation. Um, well, in fact, um, some provisions have already commenced for the uncommenced version. Um, they will come into uh, effect on the 14th of December 2018. We are talking about certain technical amendments. Uh, for the statute law miscellaneous provision uh, ordinance 2018, uh, well, in fact, a bills committee was set up to look at the amendment bill. Um, members did not have any particular views concerning part six of that ordinance. So, LN 197 need to set up a subcommittee. James Toe. Well, a question on paragraph 51. I think uh, it was said that um, we'd like to align the English uh, rendition. Uh, first, we use uh, basic as the term for rendition. Now it is primary. Is it because uh, our government made a mistake or has there been a change uh, on the mainland? Legal advisor, can you give us some explanation? Uh, if not, James Toe, would you like to set up a subcommittee? Well, a lot uh, have been set up. I want to know whether we have got a deadline coming up. Maybe we just seek some clarification, and then we can dispense with the need to set up a subcommittee. Is that the only question you have got in mind? Legal advisor, can you answer the question on, on the spot? My understanding is that this is a technical amendment. Yes, I do know that it is technical. But um, is it because the mainland has changed the translation, or is it a case of somehow our government didn't know about the official rendition and then we made a mistake and reduced the term basic? Yes, I can make some inquiries. We can put it off for a week. Well, I think I've just checked. We still have time. So it is a uh, simple question. So maybe our uh, legal advisor can uh, find out about the information and then we can uh, hold off to the question of whether we should set up a subcommittee. Now, I just want to remind members that um, if, uh, the, if you would like to seek any amendments to the subsidiary legislation, uh, you have it until the 21st of November, if extended the 12th of December. Uh, B, Legal Service Division Report on Subsidiary Legislation considered on 22nd of October 2018 and tabled in Council on 24th October 2018. I would like to uh, invite the legal advisor uh, to walk us through the paper um, LS6. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, seven items are involved, and this is to tie in uh, with the commissioning of the Hong Kong High Macau Bridge. Um, on the 24th uh, of October. First of all, um, that's about the cross-boundary movement of physical currency and bearer negotiable instruments ordinance. Um, well, s starting from 24th of October 2018, the relevant requirements would apply to passengers using the Hong Kong Chuhai Macau Bridge. And then another six items. Um, LN 198, LN 199, etc. Um, well, um, that's about the date of commencement. Four of them have been made by the Secretary of Security for the purposes uh, declaring the Hong Kong Johan Macau Bridge, Hong Kong Port, and the Hong Kong Link Road Close Road uh, 
uh, uh, closed areas, and then we give general permission to enter, so that if they meet the conditions set out in the notice, they may enter and leave the closed area at any time. And then for the remaining two, certain places will be designated as detention centers for the use by the immigration department. And then for the rest, um, made by the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, um, an amendment to the Import and Export Electronic Cargo Information Amendment Regulation 2017, so as to allow the Commissioner of Customs and Excise to use that place for electronic cargo um, handling. And then the remaining one is about the registration and licensing of vehicles. Um, when it commences, it means that new territories taxis uh, since um, 24th of October can use Shenlong Road so that they can start to um, operate uh, on that road. The relevant panels have not discussed the uh, above-mentioned seven items of subsidiary legislation. Well, as to the uh, subsidiary legislation um, made by the S4S in year 2017. A subcommittee was set up to look at those items. All right, uh, for LNs uh, 198204, need to set up a subcommittee. Mr. Jeremy Tam would like to set up a subcommittee. Anyone joining the subcommittee uh, related to Hong Kong Johan Macau Bridge? Mr. Lam Chek Ting. Um, for the sixth one. LN203. Import and Export Electronic Cargo Information Amendment Regulation 2017 Commencement Notice. Any need to set up a subcommittee? No. The last one, uh, LN204, Road Traffic Registration and Licensing of Vehicles Amendment Regulation 2017 Commencement Notice. Any need to set up a subcommittee? No. All right. Um, I would like to remind members that um, if you would like to move an amendment, um, it will be the 21st of November, and if you would like to seek an extension, it can be extended until the meeting on the 12th of December. Um, questions. Um, Mr. Porche had uh, amended his question submitted. B, member's motion. Um, issues about um, the post resolution under section 34.4 of the interpretation and general clause ordinance to move by Mr. Kent Leung in relation to following items of the subsidiary legislation and inland revenue bracket double taxation relief and prevention of fiscal evasion with respect to taxes on income on Republic of Indian order and inland revenue double taxation relief and with respect to taxes on income and prevention of tax evasion and avoidance Republic of Finland order. The two proposed resolution that is to uh, uh, extend the scrutiny period to um, November 28th electrical council meeting. The fifth, this for the council meeting on the 7th, 8th, 9th of November 2018. A questions. On that day, the electrical meeting would have arranged a 22 written questions. B, members motion. Motion of thanks. And as the chairman of the house committee, as for the debate on the motion of thanks on the 2018 policy address and we'd like to move any amendments the notice period deadline is on uh, 30th of october wednesday and for the previous two policy address members have generally agreed to adopt the debate arrangements of the fifth term of the ledge code that is that it will debate will last for three days and divide into five sessions and they will cover one group of policy area negotiated by the administration and the house committee and each member can speak for once for each session for the five sessions. However, they're not able to exceed the total speaking time slot of 30 minutes in total. As for the 2018 policy address debate arrangement, do members have any comments? Simple put, and we shall adopt the past practice. If not, then we shall arrange the 2018 policy address this way. And we'd like to ask members do you agree with the policy area combinations proposed by the government government? No comments. And um there are um a twentieth um the, the list will be on the uh, subsidiary of the of the instruments and um 
and for the subsidiary early streaming instructions and for the that please submit notify the secretary on 30th october 5th o'clock we would like to speak on this strategic legislation and on the advanced information on business for a council meeting on 40th this November 2018, Members Bill first and reading and moving of second reading. Professional Accountants Amendment Bill 2018. The uh, House Committee will deal with this uh, amendment of bill, Members Bill on the uh, November 16th meeting. And on the uh, re reports of Bills Committee and Subcommittee, Report of Subcommittee Proposed Resolution under Section 3, Bracket 1 of the Loan Ordinance. Can I invite Dr. Lo Wei Kwok to speak, Chairman? Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, um, the proposed resolution under Section 3, bracket 1 of the Loans Ordinance. Well, our subcommittee has already uh, scrutinized the proposed resolution, which, seek, uh, which seeks to uh, the legal approval to authorize the government to borrow from time to time from any person for the purposes of the Capital Works uh, Reserve Fund, sums not exceeding in total 100 billion Hong Kong dollars or equivalent, and that um, the uh, sums borrowed be credited to the CWRF. Um, the purpose of uh, launching um, the purpose of borrowing is to launch a government green bond program so as to provide funding for green public works projects of the government. Three meetings have been held with the administration and we've received views from deputations. In the course of our scrutiny, we looked at the legal authority for the proposed resolution, the drafting approach, as well as the mechanism of issuing government green bonds. Some members were concerned about certain issues, say, for example, um, the absence of green public works projects in the pro uh, wording of the proposed resolution and whether revolving credit facility is in line with the relevant provisions in the loans ordinance and then whether the money borrowed under the um, government green bond uh, program will actually be spent on projects with environmental benefits under the um, uh, Public Works Program. We did consider uh, Mr. Chu Hoidek and Mr. Aulok Him's proposals to move CSAs, but we are not going to move them in our uh, on in the name of the bills of the subcommittee. We the government won't be moving any amendments. Um, we do not uh, have any opposing views concerning the government's intention to move the motion at the meeting on the 14th of November 2018. The details are set out in our paper. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. If you would like to move any amendments to the proposed resolution, um, the deadline to give notice will be the 7th of November, Wednesday. B, report of the Subcommittee on Rights of Ethnic Minorities. I would like to invite Mr. Porcher, the Chair, to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Subcommittee on Rights of Ethnic Minorities has completed its work. Uh, it was set up in, in the past and we started our work in November 2016. We have had 17 meetings with the administration and we invited public views at 11 of them. We had an in-depth discussion of a number of topics like education, employment, health, uh, health care, housing, and how the ethnic minorities have encountered difficulties, the poverty uh, issue that they face, as well as the shortage of venues for EMs to conduct religious and cultural activities. We were glad to know that the CS4A is now leading a steering committee on EM to coordinate work to enhance support to the EM. In this year's uh, budget, uh, $500 million have been reserved uh, for this purpose. Um, our um, term has come to an end and members have already concluded our work. We are happy to uh, vacate our slot for other subcommittees to look at policy issues. Uh, as to the new initiatives drawn up by the government to enhance support for the EMs, the subcommittee has asked the administration to report the details um, in relation to the implementation to the reference panels for follow-up. As to the uh, recommendations as well as our scrutiny, uh, they have been contained uh, in great details in our report. Please note our report. Yes, members, please note our report. Eight, position of the Bills Committee and Subcommittee. As of the 25th October Thursday, we have nine as Bills Committee in action and 11 Sub, uh, subcommittees under House Committee, which is uh, four, uh, four uh, uh, subs, subsidi subcommittees under uh, panels in action. 
and 9th, the election of members of the Legislative Council Commission, and 10, election of members of the Committee on Access to Legislature's Documents and Records. The Secretariat has issued a letters to mem members to invite nominations to take part in the election of the Legislative Council Commission and the Committee of the Access to the Legislature Documents and Records. As of the nomination deadline, the two uh, committee had is received 10 nominations respectively, and the nominated nominations is equal to the uh, upper limit of the uh, vacancy available. Therefore, the no, no election will be held on today's House Committee. I will announce that the 10 members elected to the Council Commission, Honorable Abraham Sheikh, Mr. Wang Ching Kwang, Mr. Chen Hak Ken, Paul Che Wei Chen, Ma Fung Kwok, Charles Mock, Alice Mack, Dr. Helen Wong, Chong Kwok Pen, and Jeremy Tam. And also announced the 10 members elected of the Committee on Access to Legislature's Documents and Records. Mr. James Chone, Abraham Sheck, Mr. Ong Ting Kwang, Chen Hak Ken, Paul Che, Ma Fung Kwok, Charles Mock, Alice Mack, Chong Kwok Pen, and Jeremy Tam. Item 11. Request of Dr. Honorable Kwakake to seek the House Committee's recommendation for the holding of a German debate pursuant to Rule 16, Bracket 4 of the Rule of the Procedures of the Council meeting of the 31st of October 2018 on the relationship between the decision of the returning officer to declare the nomination of a candidate for electoral council election invalid and the fundamental rights of Hong Kong residents stipulated in the Basic Law. And before Dr. Kwak has spoken that um his uh, proposed request was to uh, hold a German debate on the 31st of October uh, council meeting and the wording of the motion was the um uh, uh, the relationship between the decision of the returning officer to declare the nomination of a electoral council candidate election invalid and the fundamental rights of Hong Kong residents stipulated in basic law their uh, members uh, should uh, focus their speech to whether we should support the uh, German debate motion of Dr. Kwok. I uh, notice uh, Dr. Kwok mentioned his letter that there will be a electrical by election on um, 25th of November. I would like to remind members that this election is regulated by law to ensure that we conduct it in an open and fair manner. Therefore, a member should take note of the election legislations and the guidelines and to um, avoid influencing the fair conduct of elections, the members should not expre express um, uh, messages that will have to promote or uh, obstruct any candidate from being elected or those achieve the same effect. Specifically, the members should not comment or mention the candidates in the by-election or not to uh, say out their names or insinuating whether to support or not to support a particular candidate. And uh, any uh, including those uh, candidates declared by the returning officer is valid, and members should not also display uh, uh, items that would achieve the above mentioned effect. If I regard members' speeches will affect the fair conduct of elections, I remind the relevant members to stop making such statements. If the member disregard my instruction, I would ask the members to stop speaking. I was asked Dr. K. Kwok to speak first and to consult the others' members' views. And since the deadline of uh, moving an adjourned motion debate on 31st of October had expired on 22nd of October. If members accede to the Dr. Kwok's request, they will seek the electoral president's permission to uh, uh, waive the notice period for moving this motion. Dr. K. Kwok, two minutes. This is the basic law. The basic law says very clearly that we have all got an equal right to be elected and to vote. And in fact, um, Article 30 also uh, says that the freedom and privacy of communication of Hong Kong residents shall be protected by law, etc. So it is not just one case, but there are one case after another. We have seen candidates who have their 
right to stand in elections being denied. Now, the mainland government and the special administrative region government have always said that they rule in accordance with the law, and yet the government is blatantly uh, violating the basic law, which has been promulgated by the governments themselves. Now, the candidates um, have their right to stand in election, the right to be elected uh, violated. Now, we have one country, two systems, but then this is not being respected. Now, if we have the case in which a public officer uh, can fire the uh, returning officer, remove someone that uh, they dislike, or shut somebody out, this is not acceptable, and I don't think it's acceptable to the international community. Well, we hope that at least everybody would be following the basic law strictly. In other words, uh, we should have the equal right uh, to be elected. There shouldn't be any excuses to turn away the candidates. Now, in fact, uh, the CE as well as the uh, Secretary for Justice are hiding behind the returning officer. They don't have to come up with a reason. They don't even listen to the candidate, and then they make a decision. I hope that there will be a chance for us to have a floral discussion. For those who would like to speak on this topic, please press the button to speak as soon as possible. I need to uh, manage the time. Mr. Chen Kokwen, thank you. Um, he referred to Article 26 in relation to the right to vote. But then, other than um, wielding the basic law, you have to read carefully. It says that permanent residents of Hong Kong SAR shall have the right to vote and the right to stand for election in accordance with law. What is meant by in accordance with law? You need to uphold the basic law. That's what the court has ruled. And you have to pledge allegiance to the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the PRC. This is beyond doubt. It has been pointed out clearly by the court. Well, in fact, there are certain restrictions in relation to our right to vote and to stand for election. Uh, if you are mentally incapacitated, if you are imprisoned, if you are bankrupt, or three months before the election, or uh, five years before the election, you have been imprisoned for three months, then you will lose your right uh, in relation to the right to uh, stand for election. Make sure you read carefully before you uh, sponsor this uh, German debate. Elvin Yang. Mr. Horace Chang has, of course, uh, cited certain things which can be easily understood if you apply your common sense. But then what Dr. K.K. Kwok is referring to isn't really uh, the uh, obvious uh, and easily understood examples. Today, we are talking about a case in which a political reason uh, is behind uh, the decision to deny a candidate the right to stand in an election. So Mr. Chen was really mixing up the two, and it is of no help. Well, what is uh, controversial is that there was a candidate who was disqualified, and she tried to stand again, and she didn't get a chance to explain herself. So it is uh, unjustified. The so-called red line is movable. So I think it is worth a while to have a discussion in, this, in the chamber so that um, the two opposing camps will have the chance to uh, spread um, uh, to um, list out the arguments, Mr. Lam Chak Ting. Um, well, Lao Siu Lai or some candidates' uh, previous uh, remarks were relied upon to disqualify a candidate. But then you can change your political allegiance. You can change your political uh, see, uh, stance. Say, for example, the chair. Uh, of our, I mean, the president of the LegCo uh, used to be um, the subject of the British Empire, and now uh, he has changed. Um, well, I don't think uh, we should impute anything on the president. If he has already pledged his allegiance to the SAR, then we have to take his word. Just like the case that candidates have already signed the declaration form saying that he or she uh, pledges allegiance to the SAR, you shouldn't uh, rely on previous remarks to DQ a particular candidate. Therefore, uh, I support KK Kwok's uh, proposal. Um, 
Well, just now uh, it is said that uh, we need to rely on the basic law. We uh, to, to be in line with the basic law, we should pledge allegiance to the uh, SAR. But then the returning officer isn't uh, making a decision in accordance with the rule of law. It's the rule of person. I think uh, the previous remarks were relied upon to DQ a candidate. Now, take my own example here. Uh, well, in fact, I stood in the by-election because somebody had been disqualified. Zhou Ting uh, was um, standing uh, for the election, but then she was disqualified. So what happened was that nobody uh, approached her to ask for her views. Um, it is arbitrary. Sometimes she was approached, or the candidate was approached to uh, give an explanation. So. Um, what are the criteria? Uh, who will decide and how will you decide whether the, the person involved will get the chance to be heard? Well, your time is up. I would like to invite the members to press the button to speak. I need to draw a line. I believe that somehow we have to put the matter to the vote. Uh, Claudia Mo, for the Democrats in the LegCo, we made inquiries with the administration demanding uh, a reasonable uh, explanation. Now. Um, for a for Lao Xiu Lai or a f former candidate, uh, the reasons given were really uh, rubbish. Uh, well, basically, uh, the EAC told us that it's not none of their business. Uh, it hasn't got the power to intervene. And then the SJ has said that if you don't agree with the decision of the uh, returning officer, then you may consider having an election petition. And then for the CE, Carrie Lam, she said that uh, her government uh, supports and agrees with the decision of the returning officer. So they have been relying on administrative measures to suppress um, the uh, legislative council, and you are also trying to drag in the judiciary. Well, I need to remind you that for those who have uh, indicated their wish to stand in the election will be regarded as candidates. So such uh, former candidates, I think uh, even for such uh, persons, they have to declare the election expenses. So please don't uh, mention their names. Now, for the government to DQ the candidates, I think this is most shameful. Irrespective of what the returning officer has said, I think the public are clear that is, um, they have been dq because of their thoughts, because of their uh, remarks. They haven't broken the law. As long as soon as the government doesn't like you, then you will be disqualified. It is a blatant disregard for human rights. It is a violation of the international covenants under which we are supposed to have the right to vote and the right to stand for election freely. So our rights and freedoms have been taken away. In fact, what we have got is an authoritarian um, government. And I think uh, I'm afraid when compared with Singapore, we have fewer freedoms. I will urge members uh, make use of this opportunity so that we can have a discussion about our right to vote, the right to stand for election, and our basic fundamental human rights. Mr. Yukin Yun. Uh, I speak in support uh, of uh, Mr. or Dr. K. H. Kwok. Uh, when we have a, a German debate, there will be uh, ample time for us to uh, go through the arguments for and against, so that um, there will be a platform for the society to exchange the views, to have a discussion on such controversial matters, and then we can have a better understanding of the topic. So whether you are for it or against it, I think you can still say yes to the proposal to have an adjournment debate. Now, in the course of discussion, I'm sure we all understand what concerns us most uh, would be two aspects. First of all, in the disqualification process, we want to know whether uh, procedural justice has been observed. And for the candidate who has been disqualified, uh, does she have a chance uh, to be heard? And if we are talking about constitutional rights, uh, why have, hasn't the case been heard in a court instead of being dealt with by returning officer? Mr. Ho Kai Ming, it talks about the right to vote and the right to stand for election in accordance with law. Now, the returning officer has already justified the decision on the legal, uh, in relation to the legal basis. 
Ao Lok Hing said that somebody has been disqualified, but Mr. Ao himself has qualified and has been returned to this ledge call. Now, for the returning officer to make a decision, you say that it's a civil servant um, denying her the right. And if it is a uh, political appointee, then you will say that it is political persecution. I'm afraid this is tantamount to political uh, or electioneering uh, publicity. I don't think we should turn this into a platform for such publicity, and I don't think it should go to the electrical meeting. I'm against it. Dr. Elizabeth Quart. Well, in accordance with the relevant electoral legislation, the returning officer does have the right to make a decision about the candidacy. And in fact, uh, the laws are clear to say that a candidate must pledge allegiance to the SAR and must uphold the basic law. Now, many people would like to explain away the um, um, advocacy for independence on the pretext that it is a matter of freedom of expression. I think Dr. K.K. Kwok is doing exactly the same. I'm against uh, providing a platform for such people to air their views. Dr. Priscilla Leung, uh, it's on facts and on law that the returning officer made such a decision. Uh, Article 104 has made it clear, and uh, the Oaths and Declaration Ordinance uh, has also got clear provisions. I think we all know uh, what happened. At that time, she um, made her oath at a snail's pace. And in fact, there were remarks to show that she would not be pledging allegiance to the SAR. So the decision was well justified. And in fact, on my part, I think that after a candidate has been disqualified, within the same term, same term she should not be allowed to run again. This is a waste of public resources. So no one should be allowed to stand again after he or she has been disqualified. It's a waste of money. So I don't uh, favor the proposal before us. And I support the returning officer. He or she does have the power and the right to do so. Um, Mr. Cheng. Uh, I think uh, the returning officer has made it very clear as to why the decision has been made. So I think there's no need to have another round of discussion. I'm against it. And in fact, there is an appeal mechanism for any aggrieved party to walk through the procedure to lodge an appeal. And at the same time, we know that uh, we are very close to the uh, election. I don't think we should allow ourselves to become a platform for political um, campaigns or publicity. Dr. N. Zhang, well, KK Kwok said that um, they were disliked by the government, and so they were disqualified, or she was disqualified. And then uh, a, a member also said whether uh, dissents were 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 um, being denied the chance. Well, I looked around. Um, I want to know whether you were the apple of the eye of the government. Well, um, they were trying to use an excuse to have a debate. I think it's wrong. As to the electoral uh, laws, I think there are many channels. If you are aggrieved, if you challenge the decision, I'm sure you can uh, take up the matter in a court. Uh, as to what is happening now, I don't think it's something that the electrical can resolve, and therefore I'm against uh, Dr. K.K. Kwok's uh, proposal. Dr. Helena Wong. Madam Chair, I'm in favor of Dr. K.K. Kwok's proposal that is in relation to the disqualification issue. There should be a German debate. Three points. First of all, now you see that everybody is so interested in the debate, whether you are for or against it. Uh, you still have some views. And so why don't we have a, a, a time uh, for us to set out our ideas and arguments clearly. So let's have a debate. And then some pro-establishment camp members said that uh, they were against it because they were afraid that this would become a platform for publicity for the current West constituency by election. Well, if you say that this is uh, your argument against it, I don't think it stands because you can also use that platform to say that you support the disqualification. So the platform will be a fair one. So so again, the argument doesn't stand. Priscilla Leung also said that the returning officer has got the right and power to disqualify. We don't challenge that power, but then it is too subjective. 
well, um, advocating self-determination is contravening the basic law. How can you convince that you are uh, faithfully upholding the basic law to meet the legal requirements? Now the ER, our returning officer is simply uh, doing things according to with the law. I don't see how why you have set up another platform to let the opposition to advocate the distorted ideas. The legal issues can be dealt with the legal avenues. If we have different opinions, just go to the court. Now the opposition camp wouldn't want to have a pol uh, politicizing this uh, legal issues that would bring to Hong Kong. Mr. Poche, I won't uh, co comment the merits of the disqualification. We don't need to do this. I just want to talk about the timing. Right now, just now the chairman mentioned that there will be impending by election. And a lot of colleagues mentioned, and not, all, not only this uh, case will also involve Agnes Chow, Chen Ho Tin, and uh, Leung Tin K. And if we have uh, curious enough, on the first floor of this uh, building, there are uh, six cases waiting to be heard. These will have to do with this disqualification cases. So our debate would also involve the relevant cases. What if uh, the time perspective which may impact the by election or will affect our upcoming court cases or uh, 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 maybe those who are disqualified would file a, pe a petition? It's not appropriate to uh, do this uh, search in haste. So, um, the proposer simply cannot give it the justifications. Mr. Wang Kwakin. At this sensitive moment to uh, set a platform to discuss this on LegCo, to talk about LegCo, the intentions is plain for all to see. Should LegCo become a electioneering platform? If you have uh, opinions on the decision of the returning officer, you have a lot of avenues, uh, such as con con uh, filing a judicial review. For the LegCo to intervene is not appropriate. If we hope to amend the legislation or have opinions about the uh, uh, legislation, you should pursue the uh, uh, correct channels. We should not let the uh, public can be used in this way. Mr. Ray Chan, so as long as you say this in accordance with the law, that the Hong Kong public will be satisfied with the decision to dis disqualify by the returning officer, it itself is a political decision and is getting more outrageous. This time, they would give us the opportunity to explain which is violation of the procedures and the court ruling. I absolutely support Dr. Kwok's uh, request to hold a German debate. If you look at the returning officer's letter to the candidate, it was just written in haste. And even the dates were wrong in the English version. Just take a look. Is it written? Was it written by the returning officer himself? Which I doubt. Then the pro China newspaper, according to the Chinese liaison office instructions, at making this instruction, maybe it was written by others and he couldn't get the translation right. Last one, Mr. Andrew Xu. And for Dr. KK Quox, we're claiming that as junior uh, officer, have no right to comment on the eligibility of candidates. and. For the uh, returning officer is more at like almost like a directorate level, and their pay is actually higher than the electrical counselors. I suppose the competence uh, is above us. We say that it is not fit to comment. I have str uh, strong doubts. And for those disqualified, what well, is it? Um, uh, openly or secretly proposing Hong Kong independence? I think the Hong Kong public has an idea. I think the majority of Hong Kong public. Uh, would not agree to the path of Hong Kong independence and should not use any way to shield uh, these persons. And Hong Kong is a law abiding society. If you're dissatisfied, then you can file an appeal. And well, uh, th that person gave the candidate a lot, gave them the chance to appeal. Finally, Dr. K. Kwok, to speak for one minute. S since you pressed the button after I draw the line, I uh, have uh, appealed to you. To Three times already, Doctor Kiki Kwok. I I I heard that a lot of the uh, uh, misled lead by the pre established can. Therefore, a lot a lot of the international ratings agency have uh, reducing the rule of law rating of Hong Kong. We sent a clear message that the Hong Kong unique status 
product, which include the ability to attract foreign investment, has been in decline. To a claim that a rule in accordance with the law that we are emulating the People's Republic of China and the PRC's ranking in Fraser Institute is almost at the bottom, and the Hong Kong's ranking is also declining. If you we bring up this issue, at least the logical can show their own uh, constitutional uh, autonomy and to express concern on unjust matters to let the international society know that. Uh, no matter how worse the sovereign and the Hong Kong as they are, the Lechko can maintain its status. As heard from a post establishment camp, I am sure that the justice will not be served. Since there will be a different opinion, I suggest that we put this to a vote, and now we shall have a division. Will be, uh, the bell will ring for five minutes. Shouldn't he's already be projected on the screen? And um, proposed to move in a German debate and pursuant to 16.5 of the rule of procedures.
现在开始表决。Voting begins. Please press the white button before voting. Before I announce voting, stop. Please check your vote. If there are no issues, Mr. Andrew Shu. If there are no question, voting has stopped. Please show the results. Fifty, twenty-three, four, against thirty-four, zero abstentions. I declare that the proposal is vetoed. Last item, AOB. This morning, I received a letter from Dr. N. Chang. She expressed a desire、um, that on the 31st October Legislative Council meeting, in pursuance to our P24 Record 4,、um, to move an urgent question on the leakage of customer information by Cathay Pacific and its subsidiary Cathay Dragon, and she requested to discuss the relevant matters in today's House Committee. Since there we have a lot of items on the meeting, I will deal with it under IOB to have Dr. Enchan to speak concisely on the grounds of removing this urgent question, and then I will not have a debate on this. And Dr. Enchan can、uh, apply directly to the President to move the urgent question. Dr. An Chang, Chairman, yesterday and today, the newspaper around the world、um, have reported on the Cathay Pacific's、uh, nine of leakage of the 9.4 million passengers' information, and this scale is、uh, biggest in Hong Kong history. As of now, even though Cathay uh, had um, as Informed some passengers that the information had been accessed, or what kind of information had been leaked, or even、uh, instruct them what to do. And some of them have yet to receive the Cathay's emails. Does that mean that、uh, they're not affected in this thing? And how should they、uh, deal with their personal information, or should they change their passwords and so on? And since that they have. An extensive impact to the public, and hope that we could、um, hear the administrative response on this as soon as possible. I hope that、um, at the legislative meeting on the thirty first October, we hope to move an urgent question. Due to time constraints, I will not have a debate on this. If the chair, if the members have views on this, they can communicate with her on, and and Chang should also. Uh, six uh, presidents' commission on this. There will be on our business. The meeting will be adjourned.